my dad. He foolishly agreed to let me make him over and drag. I was very surprised when he said yes. Are you excited? A little bit. Have you ever had your makeup done? I have not. Get ready to sit here for two hours while we make you into a woman. And now you'll fully understand what it's like. <laughs> and then to make my dad into a beautiful, gorgeous woman, we have Miss Cat Calico. Follow her on Instagram. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> have fun, Dad. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, Kat. Hi. with my father, William McCona, who was in the Marine Corps for 23 years and retired as a lieutenant colonel. He, for some reason, agreed to allow me to put him in drag. So thanks, Dad. She paid me. You have a camera right here. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I paid him with love. Uh, but uh, fun fact, I, I asked my dad to be a drag queen in this video, but what I didn't tell him is that I really wanted to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation from one Democrat liberal to a conservative Republican. Today's topic is going to be the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation, and I'm going to get my dad's thoughts on the entire thing. I know nothing about it. You don't know anything about the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation? I didn't follow it. Oh my god, dad! This they entire video is useless! Yeah. Uh, okay. What else can we talk about? Trump? Did you vote for Trump? I don't know anything about Trump. What kind of you. Well, you don't like either choice. You just ignore them. No, it's your civic duty as an American to vote. When you don't like either choice, you just ignore them both. Okay, well, my dad knows nothing about the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation, so I guess we'll just discuss politics. Why are you a Republican? A uh, Republican was the uh, political party which had uh, views that most closely aligned with my own. And those views include minimal government, mm -hmm. um, doing things on your own rather than being helped, because I think you learn more when you're forced to do things on your own. I, I believe in freedom of business, freedom of speech, and all those things. What do you think about the Republican Party now that they've confirmed someone into office who has over 23 sexual assault allegations against him, and he also nominated a <clears throat> Supreme Court justice who has a ton of sexual assault allegations against him? Well, that one item by itself does not condemn an entire party. However, I believe that the Republican Party has already condemned itself on numerous counts, uh, where they've let down the conservative values of the people that originally made up the party. I'm very... Uh, disappointed and uh, disillusioned by the current position of the Republican Party. Are you going to vote on November 6th? Of course. What are your stances on things? Fortunately, how we vote in elections is privileged information and you don't have to make it known. So you're pleading the fifth? The fifth implies that I would uh, be incriminating myself in some kind of criminal activity. So I'm not pleading the fifth. I'm just standing by my constitutional rights to privacy. You're a person who shot guns for a very long time. I believe you were a sharpshooter champion and you taught me how to shoot guns when I was a kid. But we're now finding that school shootings are a big thing. What do you think as like someone who's an educated gun owner needs to happen in order for these kinds of public mass shootings to stop? Responsible use of guns has been a part of this country since before the revolution. Totally. Uh, every family had firearms, and they taught their children how to use them safely. Accidents can happen, sure. Uh, but a lot of the gun violence that we hear about, is it the gun that caused it, or is it because somebody had a problem psychologically, they got into an emotional altercation with somebody? The fact that a gun was present, sometimes, yeah, there's an argument there for if they didn't have a gun, then it wouldn't have escalated as far. But is it worth it giving up a, a constitutional right for those instances which, in my opinion, are very, very minor? Minor in terms of percentage-wise of how often it happens. To clarify, I don't believe in taking away guns. I think, you know, the reason we have guns in our constitution is very valid. I think it's a, it's a safe thing for some people to have if they're responsible and if they're psychologically sound. But I think what a lot of Democrats are trying to do is to put more sanctions in place so, so that people who are psychologically unsound can't get a hold of a gun. I haven't gone through the process of getting a firearm yet. As you know, I am thinking about it, but from my friends who are firearm owners, even they agree like there should be more of a background check. It should be like the DMV, where like you do have to go retake your test after a certain amount of time. You should have to have like a, a psychological evaluation that it's almost too easy for any person to get a hold of it without any training. More than the psychological evaluation is what you just mentioned is training. Uh, 
I recently went through a uh, concealed weapons carry course. And the only reason I bothered with that was because you can't open carry in California. So in places where if I did want to take a firearm, I had to use a concealed carry weapons permit. And why would I want to use those? Because like if I go out into the desert and go hiking, I would want to have a weapon with me in case of an animal attack or somebody comes after me. It provides an immense sense of feeling safe to have a firearm or something like that. Not because I want to take it to the mall or, or a concert or anything like that. That's, in my opinion, is totally unnecessary. But in the course of going through that, I was shocked uh, how many people there wanted to have that license because they wanted to be able to, they say, protect themselves if something happens but they didn't seem to have a good reason. They didn't seem serious about it because when we went to the, the pistol range, from five feet away, you're shooting at a target about this wide, about this tall, and half the shots are missing the paper. If you can't hit a paper from five feet away, you don't deserve to be shooting a weapon in public, period, because you're not going to hit what you're Were those people at. still able to obtain firearms at the end of that? Sure. You just had to make so many hits on paper, uh, and it wasn't 100%. That's concerning. It is. Do you know about the Me Too movement? The Me Too movement. Yes. A little bit. So the Me Too movement was started because women were very tired of having to keep silent about sexual assault, sexual harassment, etc. So there was this big wave online of women coming out and accusing like big wigs. It sort of pivoted to where now the main argument amongst some men is that, oh, any woman can accuse any man at any time of sexual assault and he's like fired from his job, it ruins his career, although it really doesn't. What are your thoughts on like sexual assault allegations that are coming out today? I have limited knowledge of the Me Too movement because I I don't read about it uh, except what I see on my phone when I read about the news. But from what I've seen, uh, women have every right to speak out about sexual harassment and sex, especially a sexual assault. It's understandable why some hesitated, particularly if they're in a field like entertainment. Uh, if you complain about something like that, your career could end in that, in that field. But I think the Me Too movement would have helped itself and women better if it forced a look at applying the law. A lot of the complaints that I've read about, about the Me Too movement, is the hearsay. Whereas if something we're taking in a legal direction, you've got to deal with evidence. Right? There has been some, like the Brock Turner case, for example. He was sentenced, I think, only to six months in jail for raping a woman. There were, there were witnesses there who saw that he raped her. And so I think a lot of women are really discouraged today because the law is not backing us up when we do talk about it. And unfortunately, with the way that sexual assault goes, it's like, you don't want to talk about it. Your instinct is to like take a shower immediately after or to forget about it your brain literally doesn't want to remember the details of that and so going forward to like the police and all that is not actually encouraged and not instinctual for women in my opinion men and women are not the same they just aren't okay so uh, the legal system is dominated by men a better solution it's, it's not a short-term solution but is to get more women on the bench so that you can have more views from both sides on cases like that uh, in deciding on uh, sentences. A woman judge might be able to better appreciate the magnitude of the offense. I'm not saying that uh, it's okay that men are, are dim viewed in, in those things, but I'm, I'm saying it's a fact of life that men, are, they don't view things the same, they grew up different. So as a society, we have to fix that by better integration of the genders. Um, cool. Is there anything else you want to say about politics in general, Dad? Yes. <clears throat> Does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. Squarespace has beautiful award-winning templates that have no patches, installs, or upgrades ever. Plus, 24-hour customer service if you have a question at 3 a.m. You can go to squarespace.com Anna to start your free trial today and use the offer code Anna for 10% off at checkout. Uh, I'm Anna Arcana, and this is my dad in drag. Goodbye. Vote. <laughs>